Hi engineers, we're going to talk more about bridge building today. Now you should be designing your bridge that we have talked about last week and then in uh, in-person classes before that. Here's an example of a very flat arch. Now you can make this with craft sticks and with other materials, but just remember there's going to be a lot of sideways push on it as the force here goes down And you can have a truck up here. The weight of that truck goes down and the force will be pushed sideways because of the arch shape. There's a lot of pressure here so this has to be made very well. As you can see most of the force is still sideways and only a little bit of it is down and that's because this kind of arch is designed to be pressing against something very strong. You might see this with granite cliffs on either side, hard rock. That hard rock will take the forces very well. An example of this is the shape of the bridge that goes over the Colorado River very near the Hoover Dam. This is a very flat arch. For some place that doesn't have beautiful hard stone walls, we'll need to make the arch go more vertically. And in that case, It'll look more like a half circle, and that's so that if there's any force on the top of the bridge here, there's our little Amazon Prime truck there, the force down here is spread out and down by the arch. And now it's going almost vertically we can make it go vertically. And that's so that we can just put a heavy foundation here at the bottom over our river, whatever. This means we can't have as much of a single span. This distance here will be shorter. But we will be able to work this in softer soil where we can just put down something hard for the bridge to sit on and the arch shape brings the force going vertically here so that all the weight of the bridge, both the dead load, which is the weight of the bridge itself, and the live load, which is the weight of anything that goes on the bridge. And that's not always just Amazon trucks. Think about in the winter, it could be snow. Snow is very heavy and that would be a live load to the bridge. Ponding water from a rainstorm could add tons and tons of water onto a bridge and that has to be carried off to the side, the weight of it. So the arch is a very effective way to do it and we can do that very easily with craft sticks. As its reverse as well, a type of suspension bridge. Like this. There is what's called the Iron Bridge in England, which basically uses lengths of cast iron. They look kind of like this. It looks like a twin keyhole, and then they're riveted in place. And each of those lines up, and they made kind of an arch like that, just like what you're doing with your craft sticks. See that? They have rivets here, you will have glue. And then you could hang other ones down like this. If you wanted to, you could even use string. I think that would be very good. But actually suspend the roadway so the string holds the weight. In the past, we've had people pretend like they've made suspension bridges, but they've made what is really a post and beam here. The weight's actually carried here, the forces are carried here, and then they just had this stuff to make it look like a suspension bridge. I'd like for someone to actually try to make a suspension bridge where the roadway is being held by the strings, which is then being held by the shape up here. You can make it a through arch bridge. Remember, that's the Sydney Harbor Bridge, okay?
We could do that. There are a lot of things to do, but to talk about these angles of force here, I'm going to move the camera angle over to the desk, and we're going to take a look at me messing around with some uh, uh, craft sticks to show you how that's going to work out. Pardon the change of venue here. There we are. Right next to my trusty mask. No one else is around today while I film this. If you make an arch that is vertical like this, if you only have three sticks to go from vertical, which is straight up and down, to horizontal, which is across, you've got two 45 degree angles, one here and one here. Does that look familiar? A lot of barns were made with this simple idea here. It's easy to construct. It creates a span. It's reasonably strong and very simple. The weight here is carried here and here, and then it goes down to the foundation. Look at that. You have a nice span, and then the roadway will go on top. If you want to get more complex, you can make a wider span by spreading these out. But notice now the forces here, there's some outside force because this isn't coming straight down. As long as you have something firm to anchor it to, that's great. But realistically, if you're going to do that, we don't want to have a lot of big angles. We want to have smaller angles so that we change the force less. Here we have a nice half arch, and we've used four sticks instead of three, and this allows these angles to be smaller, which puts less pressure on the glue joints. Okay? We could even make this vertical here if we wanted to. And then each of these angles, that's one angle, two angles, three angles, and this is going from vertical to horizontal, so that's 90 degrees, and we want each of these angles to be one-third of that. So one-third of 90 is 30. So we had measure, you could use a protractor, and measure that 30-degree angle here, 30-degree angle here, 30-degree angle here. Will it make a difference? In the real world, it certainly will. And wouldn't that be a nice thing to be able to make a bridge as much like a real one as possible where you calculate the right angles? If I have only a part of an arch like this, this had better be anchored to something strong because this will flex out. And you will see that the bridge under load will try to split. It'll literally, it'd be like you wearing socks on your feet and standing on a slippery floor and holding your legs out wide and you'll, you'll, you'll watch them just slide out like this. That's what's going to happen here and here. The bridge, the sideways forces will try to push these out and this can cause structural problems here even to the point of failure. So you have to make this bridge stronger than one that has four components. And this ends up coming straight up and down here. See right here? All the force is going straight down. There's not as much force going sideways. And that's because these joints at 30 degrees each are guiding the force down the arch. And that's the whole idea of the arch right there. Okay. If you're going to make a post and beam, something very simple like this, you can see how if there's a lot of weight in the middle, you're putting a lot of force on that. Think about this thing pushing down, and that will try to bend this. 
right at the joint, its weakest part. So what can we do? We can add supports, but remember if we try to bridge too much of the distance, this support isn't helping very much. All that force is going down here, it's going to put a lot of pressure on this glue point right there. If I have it vertically to take a lot of the force down, we don't change the distance out from here very much. Remember, it's this moment arm from the edge to the middle that creates the problems. It's called a moment arm, and you all can look at that up. Here, I've now moved the moment arm only this far instead of this far. So there must be a happy medium, and there is and it's usually at 45 degrees. That way, this distance here and this distance here are the same. This makes this an isosceles triangle, if you remember that from your math. And that means that the force will channel down here without too much additional stress on the joints, and it changes the moment arm from here to here. From here to here. Makes a very strong bridge. You see this all the time on wooden structures. See that? There we go. That distance is the same as that distance. And now we have a good strong structure that's supported in the middle by these two bracings and it's easy to put on. Now, in the real world, with concrete, we actually have bracings too, and they'll look something like this. I'll put the camera back in the original position. Please let this work. There we go. When we use concrete, and when I was driving home to my mother's house to celebrate Thanksgiving, I always look at the bridges, and I noticed a lot of bridges had concrete shaped like this. Do you see how that they've made an extra wide support to change that moment arm from the center to the middle to about from here to the middle? And that reduces the amount of force in the middle right here because they've added extra support out on the edge. You can do that with your craft sticks. Draw it out, design it, and then hopefully next week we'll be back in person. And then you can show them to me. These craft sticks that I got here, they're called Woodpile Fun. What's the name of them? I will get a better picture of it. I found these at Hobby Lobby. Okay, and they have all sorts of things you can make out of it. I got 150 sticks for three dollars, and they're very high quality. So you can see here they have all sorts of things that you can make from it. Anyway, it's worth the thought. Please start working on your design so that when we come back together, we'll have a lot of fun planning our bridge. And don't worry about mistakes. Mistakes are how you learn. Okay? Thanks, everybody.